Welcome to Learn Electrics and this next video in our 18th edition exam help series. Whether you are studying for the exam or perhaps just wanting to update your knowledge, we are sure that you will find this video both interesting and helpful. Today we will look at part 2 of the wiring regulations book which is called Definitions. To begin with, we can ask ourselves just what is a definition? A statement or sentence that explains the meaning of a word or phrase. Part 2 definitions is an important part, much more important than many realise. There may only be two exam questions to be answered, but it goes much further than that. You can use definitions to check your understanding of any part of the wiring regulations book. We can start by visiting our go to page in the wiring regulations, that is, page 3 for the main contents page. Scanning down the page, we quickly find part 2 definitions near the top, indicating page 24. If we find page 24, we come to the beginning of part 2. And there are three sections to definitions. The first and largest section is the definitions and phrases used in the book. The second section is where the meaning of the various symbols is explained. And then finally, the third section is the abbreviations that are used and what they mean. And we will look at these in turn. We can begin with the first section, the definition of keywords and phrases on pages 24 to 39. This first section of 16 pages is in alphabetical order. A keyword or phrase will be shown followed by an explanation of what it means in relation to electrical wiring. Please take the time to go through this section. There will be times when knowing how to use this information is going to be really useful. Some entries are followed by a number in curly brackets. This means that the explanation of this word or phrase is specific to the wiring regulations as a similar word may be used in another industry with a totally different meaning. If you look at bonding network, for example, at the bottom of page 24, you will see an example of this. It means that this definition only applies to section 444 in the wiring regulations. When answering exam questions on definitions, do not trust your instinct. Do not think that one of the offered answers sounds about right. Find the answer in the book. You will need the exact wording. For example, a question might ask, what is a caravan park? Everybody knows what a caravan park is, but would you describe it using the exact words shown here and only these words? An area of land that contains two or more caravan pitches. This is the only correct answer in the exam, so you must find the definition if you want the point. The exam setters will use two modes of asking questions. The first style of question will give you a key word or phrase and ask you to find the correct definition from the four sentences offered, A, B, C or D. And the alternative type of question is to give you a definition sentence and to ask you to find the word or phrase that they are describing. And we will show you this now. In this first example, we are given the words cable ladder. This is the key word. The question asks us to find the correct definition for a cable ladder. There follows four sentences with possible answers. Only one is correct. Only one sentence will almost exactly match the words in the wiring regulations book. Find cable ladder on page 25 and we find that the description in the book matches exactly with answer D. How easy is that? Don't try to guess a meaning, just find the answer in the book. In this example, we have done the opposite. We have given you the description or definition and we want you to find the short phrase that matches this. Don't try guessing, just work through the answers A, B, C, D in order and you will quickly find the answer. Look in the book for mode 1 charging. Does the wording match the question? No. Move on to mode 2 charging. Is there a match? No. And so on. When we get to mode 4 charging, we find that the words in the book match the question exactly. Answer D is the correct answer. Trust me, just follow through using a sequential search. 
randomly flicking through the pages is not going to help. The next bit is crucial. You absolutely must understand the definitions relating to voltages. This is so very important, not just for the exam, but for your whole working life. And there are many electricians who still don't understand the different voltages. Don't be one of them. As you can see here, there are many voltage expressions. And what we will do now is bring them all together in a nice, organised and understandable way. A voltage can be what we call AC, alternating current. The voltage is rising and falling up and down at a certain frequency. For most of the UK, this will be 50 hertz or 50 cycles per second. And then we have DC voltages or direct current, the sort of voltage we get out of a car battery, just a positive pole and a negative pole and nothing changes. Then we have three different voltage bands. The first is extra low voltage, which starts at zero volts. This is called band one voltage. If it is an AC voltage, the maximum for this band is 50 volts. If it is DC, then it is 120 volts. And the limits have been set at the limit of survivability. An electric shock at 50 volts AC is unlikely to be fatal for a normal, healthy adult. Then we have band two or low voltage. Our domestic sockets and lights come into band two, low voltage, as do many industrial and commercial installations. As you can see on the chart, the AC voltage range is anything from above 50 volts up to 600 volts for single phase circuits that are measured between phase and earth. And above 50 volts AC up to 1000 volts if measured between two phase wires in a three phase system. DC voltages are also shown on the chart. Why is 230 volts or 400 volts called low voltage? It doesn't feel like low voltage when you touch it. And the answer is that compared to the high voltage range, which might be a quarter of a million volts or more, then perhaps 230 volts is a low voltage. But beware, DIY stores and many wholesalers still call 12 volts low voltage when it isn't. Now we have high voltage. Anything above the low voltage limits for AC and DC are called high voltages and there is no band number for high voltage. Moving on to symbols on page 40 and 41. The symbols are shown alphabetically with their meanings shown at the side and then a regulation number in the wiring regs book where you can find an example of the symbols being used. Again, don't guess with symbol meanings. It is so easy to check it properly. And the last section is abbreviations on pages 42 and 43. Just like symbols, the abbreviation will be shown, the meaning and an example of it being used in the book. Let's try a few questions now. But first, the answers to the two voltage drop questions from the last 18th edition training video. Question 1. The closest, most appropriate answer was answer B, 5.3 volts, give or take a very small amount. And question 2. The closest answer was 66 metres. You will find that all the number choices for calculation questions are far enough apart that it is easy to find the correct choice. This is to allow for small differences in rounding up or rounding down in different calculators. And so to the questions for this video on definitions. And we have five questions for you this time. Question one is a description. And we ask you to find the key word and make your choice from the four answers offered. Now, question two, we give you the key word and we ask you to find the correct definition sentence. Question three is a tricky one on purpose. Take your time with this one. The correct answer may not be the first answer that you think of. Something like this is a typical exam question. On to question four, a question on symbols. And finally, to abbreviations. And you should have noticed that the exam questions will always give you enough information for you to find the right part of the book. In summary, definitions is in part two of the wiring regulations book. Please do not ignore its importance. There may only be two questions in the exam, but the information is relevant to all parts of the wiring regulations. And 
pay particular attention to the section on voltages. Understanding the voltages and the voltage bands is so very important to your work as well as the exam. Well, that's it. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable and that you've added more knowledge to your mental toolbox. By clicking on subscribe below, you will have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you'll also ensure that you don't miss our next weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us and we do appreciate that small act. It does make us feel that all our efforts are worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.